It is a very important motion in that I think it recognises, like most people recognise, that we'd like to move to renewables. But we equally have to be realistic about it, that we're not going to achieve that in a couple of days or weeks or even months, that we're just going to have to be realistic. We're going to have to figure out a strategy for powering this state while we make that move. And, you know, I, I've listened um, to what the government have to say about this matter, and in particular, uh, Minister Ryan, I suppose, who, who is the minister in the department tasked with this, and there's great hope for the uh, offshore uh, wind energy sector, and uh, he has uh, huge ambitions in that regard, and I certainly would never fault anybody for having hope or ambition. Um, but I would say that hope and ambition have to be tempered a little bit by reality. You know, notwithstanding all the talk that wind energy is going to, we're going to be net exporters and everything, we have to bear in mind that this government, in 2020 when this government came to power, 35% of the energy that was generated in the state was generated through wind. Last year, that fell to 29%. So, you know, the reality belies the words that are being floated about. We're being told that offshore is, is, is this great panacea, yet Equinor, formerly um, Statoil, the, the Norwegian state company, which is almost the biggest player, certainly, at the cutting edge of floating. Um, they're the only ones that I'm aware of who have actually developed floating um, turbines and to harness the wind energy off the Atlantic you're going to have to have floating ones because they can't really, uh, offshore turbines need to be either anchored or floating. It, they'll be anchored in the Irish Sea but in the Atlantic they'll have to be floating. They pulled out. There was a huge announcement. I was, of course I was delighted with it about what was going to happen at Money Point. Yet they pulled out a couple of months later, they citing, or sorry, they didn't cite anything, but industry sources said it was because they were baffled by the lack of planning reform and regulatory reform, and that there was no real capability in Ireland to develop this sector, no possibility of, of uh, developing this sector. So we're being told, live horse and you'll get grass, and the grass you're going to get is going to be this offshore wind energy. Uh, yet, you know, we don't even have the ports. Today there was a, a survey uh, released, uh, Wind Energy Ireland did a survey into the, a national port study and found that we have no ports in the Republic of Ireland. Now, I, I'm aware that the CEO of Fines um, is very ambitious in this regard, uh, uh, but that ambition, his ambition has to be backed by government ambition and it has to be funded. Um, and the, again, the, the moves aren't in that direction, but fines alone, it, it is, it's great that we have a, 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 an, a, an ambitious CEO on fines with the foresight to see what needs to be done. But it's not so good if it's not met, matched by government, and it needs to be matched right across the country, because you know, if, if it is going to be this great panacea, which the government are saying it is, well, then we're going to have to have ports to, to load these huge, Developments. I mean, we're not talking, these floating turbines are going to be absolutely mammoth in scale. And they have to be done locally. They can't, if the big companies could, could sort of load up the ships in Aberdeen or Stranraer or wherever, they would do so. But they can't. They have to be done locally. And we don't have the ports to do it. And not alone do we not have the ports to do it, there's no sign of us having the ports to do it. But yet, we're going to have lots of wind energy and it's going to solve all of our problems. Minister, you know, I do support the government's ambition and hope, but I'm speaking to small businesses across this state who are being hammered. I mean, I could give you the, the, the Shannon Leisure Centre is a, 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 it's state funded, it's funded through Clare County Council. And their energy bills from August 20 to 21 to 22 have gone from, they've doubled and doubled again. So they're over 7,000 euros a month. Now they're funded through Clare County Council. So how are they going to keep their doors open? How are they going to provide school children and people in Shannon who want to swim, want to stay fit? How's that going to happen? That's just one example. The supermarkets, like, you know, when I was a child, there was one fridge in lots of shops. Now you have a whole walls of fridges and whatever. They're not going to be able to keep the lights on because we are utterly reliant on imported energy. And nothing that the government is doing is changing that fact. We have no control 
over the cost of imported energy. We have to pay whatever the rate is. And we're not developing, we're, we're talking about wind energy, not really developing it. <clears throat> we're not even talking about nuclear energy, but we're happy to import it and pay whatever the going rate is. And of course, the going rate is linked to the price of gas, and that suits the Germans. And of course, it's all hail the Germans in, 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 in your government at the moment, and um, uh, particularly <coughs> Ursula von der Leyen. I mean, is, is Michal Martin told you what job he's getting? Because our whole strategy around gas, uh, around the Ukraine war, uh, around everything is based on whatever the European Commission wants. Somebody's clearly auditioning for a role. Maybe it's yourself, I don't know. But I'm not content to see this state being sold down the Swanee on the basis of the German mistake of putting all their eggs in the back. Yeah, well, you can heave and sigh and fall over if you want to. But the reality is that Germany is utterly dependent on gas because they decommissioned their nuclear stations. France is in a world of a better place because they didn't decommission their nuclear power stations because it costs an awful lot less to produce nuclear energy at the moment than it does to generate electricity through gas. The Germans made a mistake, the French didn't. Because the Germans made a mistake, we're all paying for it. Because the price that we pay for imported energy, whether it's generated through nuclear or any other, is linked to the price of gas. And that is at the behest of the Germans. And we, for whatever reason, are enthralled to Ur Ursula von der Leyen. And she, of course, is a former Minister for Defence in Germany, that they wanted to get rid of and managed to shunt her off, all right, but that's a different matter. I want to come back to energy. I'm asking that this government get real about how we are going to keep the lights on in this state, how we are going to achieve some degree of self-sufficiency. And I commend the rural group for bringing forward a motion in that regard. And I have to say I'm very disappointed by the counter motion being put forward by the government, which is basically whistling past the graveyard. Live horse and you'll get grass. It'll all be fine in the day. It won't unless strategy changes. And I see no sign of the government's lofty words being matched with actions on the ground. Thank you very much. I did, I did agree with some of the things Deputy McNamara said, but I'm reminded of the time when he compared us to Cromwell for COVID restrictions when, when it turned out... The, when at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we've one of the best outcomes in the entire world uh, from COVID. From COVID. Thank, thanks, to, thanks, to, uh, thanks to the policies uh, of this government. And I think, to be fair, um, there's a wide range of, of suggestions uh, on the opposition, and there's, there's, there, there are certainly interesting points right across the spectrum. The, the general criticism I would give to, to opposition response is that, yeah, I, I, no, look, the government is, is, and governments all over the world are struggling with this crisis. The opposition can't be expected to come up with uh, answers. But I think at least an acknowledgement as to how complex this situation, I think, would be useful for the public. It is incredibly complex. I mean, the issue of decoupling uh, electricity and gas was never mentioned in this doll until relatively recently, and it is an issue that is under consideration at the European Union level. And the European Union, contrary to what Deputy McNamara says, is not Ursula von der Leyen telling us what to do, but particularly in energy, it's all of the governments working together to get the best possible solution for every European citizen, and that means, uh, that means getting the best price uh, for energy.